rather be you than me What's with we? Everywhere I go I see No one really wants to be free It's like we'd rather be you than me What's with we? You need to be Oh so free Yes in me What's up y'all? It's your girl Chanel from Complex Simplicity. Happy Tuesday, Wednesday. It's been a few days, a few weeks. <laughs> had a crazy month, I feel. Um, but you know, I had to come back on to do a vlog. Um, my birthday was actually yesterday and um, I've just been enjoying celebrating um, and even like celebrating just with myself. You know, I had like the, the kickback house party with family and friends. You know, I had uh, one of my good girlfriends um, took me out to dinner last night. Um, but I also can honestly say that even though it wasn't planned, I also had a good amount of time to be by myself on my birthday and to like enjoy myself and celebrate myself by myself, if that makes sense. Um, kind of the first time that I've ever done something like that. Normally on my birthday, I'm always like with my family or, you know, um, my friends, you know, that includes my husband with my as my family. Um, but this was the first time that I actually had like a good amount of time on, you know, being by myself. And if I'm being honest and transparent in the beginning, I was like, oh, damn, like this is a little like whack, you know. Um, my husband ended up having to pull a double shift. Um, and so he couldn't be with me on my actual birthday. And at first I was gonna go to my parents' house, but then a part of me really just wanted to rest because I knew I had to get back to work um, the following day and that I would have like a whole stretch of like seven days to work before my next day off. So I didn't wanna spend a lot of my birthday behind the wheel driving from point A to point C, so to speak. Um, my parents live about a half an hour from where I live. And I really didn't wanna like do all of the commuting, so to speak. Um, and so where I live, um, I live in a townhouse and in a townhouse complex. And, um, you know, we have a pool. And I always say to myself during the summers that I don't enjoy this amenity that we do have that we pay for, um, or mainly my husband pays for. Um, so I wanted to like be able to set aside some time to enjoy it. So I would say, you know, yesterday was my third time for the summer going to the pool. And, you know, I put on my little sexy two piece. Yes, I did. Bright orange, colorful bathing suit. And I filled up um, some Merlot in this like to go cup. I packed my towel, I put on my sunscreen, I had my Ray-Bans, my sunglasses, um, I had my phone, I had my little uh, pass that proves that I live within the complex, and I was ready to go. And so I literally spent two and a half hours at the pool, hot as hell outside. Um, it was like plus 90 degrees. Um, but I actually, for Dolo, enjoyed myself laying out by the pool, eventually I kind of put my feet in. And I did some thinking, I did some manifesting, I did some relaxing, and um, I was glad that I was able to have that moment, as unexpected as it was. Um, my best friend had stated, you know, she wanted to take me out, but then we couldn't make that happen. And so I was like, Chanel, it's your birthday. Like, you don't have to have people by your side for you to celebrate like go to the pool get sexy have a good time and um it's funny i actually <laughs> took a picture of myself before i left for the pool in this bathing suit i posted it on my insta stories and my facebook stories you know my husband ends up hitting me up when he saw it like uh you good like what's going on really and i'm like listen love um i think i look pretty damn good to be 36 years old not saying that 36 years old means that I'm old, but just, you know, sometimes, you know, I run into people that I grew up with or that I went to school with or I went to college with. Um, and not everybody always looks uh, that well, or sometimes you could tell that people could have lost themselves over the years. I'm super proud of myself as a brown girl who has battled with weight more than not in my life, right? 
I'm proud of myself for not letting myself go, you know, just because I am married, I'm proud of myself that I didn't allow myself to let it all go. I didn't allow myself to let my body go physically, my sexy go, my identity go, my chasing my dreams go. Like, I'm glad that I am still a whole individual um, in addition to my husband, right? You know, and so for me, it was a powerful moment. And I haven't really, I haven't hit the gym in a long time, y'all, if I'm being honest. Um, I haven't run the way I used to because my, my work schedule was just so inconsistent and crazy. But what has kept me is the fact that I don't work a desk job anymore, so I'm not at my desk sitting down, snacking, eating. Um, and I've done a hell of a lot of dancing for the last year, um, which is a workout in and of itself. And so with me taking in less food and um, still getting some level of cardio in through dance, that has helped me, you know. Um, and so when I put on my bathing suit, I felt pretty damn good. And um, I posted it for a while, but then it seemed like my husband felt a little somewhat some kind of way and men please help me to understand <laughs> like why is it that some of y'all um kind of get a little weird when your your woman or your wife is like showing her sexy now i will always respect myself right i'm never gonna have any distasteful photos out there and i told my husband listen like when we go away on vacations i'm taking pictures in whatever bathing suits or bikinis i'm wearing what is the difference right and I find it interesting that I feel like I look better in my bathing suits and bikinis now than I have last summer, the summer before that, the summer before that. And so it's like, so it's almost when I'm looking pretty damn good, it's, it's almost like, oh no, you don't want the world to see that. Like, <laughs> fellas, help me understand. I understand, I can empathize and see in a way that, you know, especially if you're married, you, you want, that for your eyes only, but at the same time, you know, I had to explain to my husband, like, listen, I'm proud of how I look, you know? Um, for a lot of women, that is a sense of insecurity. There were times in my life where I felt insecure with when it came to my weight or insecure with how I looked in certain clothes or in a bathing suit. So I'm celebrating at 36 years old, I am celebrating the fact that I can put on a bikini and feel damn good about myself, that I can wear poom poom shorts, you know, it sounds ratchet, but feel damn good about myself, that I could wear jeans, I could wear a dress, whatever. I could wear my work uniforms and feel damn good about myself. Um, and I even put that on my, uh, my, my post today for Complex Simplicity, my Instagram page, which is at Complex Simplicity 09. You know, normally for my birthdays, I'll have that one token picture I'll put up that says, thank you everybody for you know wishing me a happy birthday, yada, yada, yada. Um, to, you know, yesterday I was kind of like flooding at least people's Instagram story feeds or here and there the timelines because for once in my life, I felt the need to celebrate how I look and feel. And um, it doesn't mean that I don't have further work to do in my body. It doesn't mean that I don't have further work to do from within. But just at this stage of my life where I am at 36 years old, I feel pretty damn good. I feel like I am beautiful and that I am sexy. And I love me from the inside and the outside. I focus a lot on inward love, which is way important. Um, but I also think there's something to be said about loving what you see when you look at yourself in the mirror as well. And I wanted to kind of put that out there and say, hey ladies, particularly, and men, it is okay, we should strive to really like what we see and who we see in the mirror, you know? Um, and so yes, I did go on with my bikini to the pool, had me a good time, you know? And um, then randomly my girlfriend, Vanessa, shout out to you, Vanessa, texted me and said, happy birthday girl, what you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm by the pool in my complex, just chilling. And she's like, you wanna go out? Let's go out to dinner. And took me out and we went to Outback. And I was able to like end the night off with like a birthday dinner. And so shout out to everybody who came to my 90s inspired musical vibes party with wine and all of that good stuff. Um, shout outs to all of y'all who made the effort to come out and celebrate with your girl. Shout outs to um, being able to have my own time to be one with myself. 
um, on my birthday for a lot of that day. And then shout outs to my girlfriend, Vanessa, for taking me out to dinner that night. And, you know, it was a, it was a pretty good weekend. I was off from work. Um, shout outs to my coworkers. I came back to work today. They had a nice card for me and like a birthday milkshake even though I didn't tell them I'm not a milkshake person, but I, I drank as much as I could <laughs> before it started irritating my stomach. Um, but uh, the, the thoughts behind it, the sentiments, I appreciate it. All, everyone who shouted me out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, thank you for showing your girls some B-Day love. Um, I've said this repeatedly on my social media over the weekend. I'm excited for what 36 brings, um, and I'm also made it a point to manifest what it is that I want. I, don't, I didn't mention this, but I will put this out there. First things first, good health is what I want. Um, to be able to bring a little one into this world would be a beautiful thing. Um, to be able to continue to, to strive and continue to be a better wife and to have a, a even stronger marriage. Um, for my brands that I'm building to turn into empires, um, to have amazing opportunities come my way. Um, to just still be able to have a certain level of freedom within myself, um, to be open for what God has for me, and um, to have financial freedom, uh, more fiscal responsibility. Um, and yes, like I'm here for it all, I'm manifesting it all, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. <laughs> um, and this year will be an amazing year. Um, I, it's crazy enough on my birth, not on my birthday, but like my birthday celebration, which was this past Saturday, the 27th, you know, I got some not so good news, um, from someone who's like family to me with regards to their health. And so, you know who you are, you're continuously in my prayers, my family's prayers. Um, it just reminded me of how short life really is. And I always say this all, I say this all the time, life is too short. Um, this was yet another reminder of how short life is um, when it comes to you just never know when your health could be altered at any given point in time. And so um, the more I was a little down, if I'm being honest, you know, um, but then, you know, I shed my few tears about it and continue to bear, you know, my, my loved one up in prayer. Um, and yeah, this is why I often say, folks, we have no, we don't have a lot of time on our hands. Let's continue to work on ourselves, love ourselves, follow our dreams, like travel the world, go for that job that you want to go for, um, open yourself up for love if that's what you're seeking, um, open yourself up to have a child, like that's kind of where I am right now if that's what you're seeking, like we don't have time to waste, and so. Um, I urge you, and I'm speaking to myself right now as well, let us continue to um, remember that life is precious and it's short. Let's stop the pettiness and the feuding. And, you know, if there's a loved one in your life that you're at odds with and, and they're not toxic and it's you want to get things back on track, get things back on track. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't know how long we have out here. Um, so I wanted to put that out there as well. But yes, um... So that's why birthdays are very important and special and big to me and I'll always find a way to celebrate every year because I don't take life for granted. Um, so yeah, and let the celebrations continue, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, hope, I know my husband's gonna have to do something for your girl, hang out, something, you know, take me out, show me out. <laughs> um, and any other of my people's loved ones, family, friends, you know, listen, I'm here celebrate for the next few weeks um but yeah man like that's kind of been how my weekend was mercury has been in retrograde thank god i believe it's no longer in retrograde either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow so when i started this vlog off by saying that the, the month of july was a little crazy it was hella crazy for me y'all <laughs> like everything unexpected that you wouldn't think could happen happened um, I always say when Mercury's in retrograde, hide your kids, hide your wives. Like it's a lot of craziness that happens, a lot of chaos that ensues. And, um, I was holding on for dear life. <laughs> I feel like my world is just now somewhat, um, getting back to its level of balance. Um, 
And so I don't know what it is. And I tell y'all, I am not someone who's all into astrology and all that kind of stuff. But I've experienced for the last few years, every time Mercury is in retrograde, shit gets crazy out here. So <laughs> be on high alert. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I've just been maintaining, you know, at work, you know, still trying to absorb it all, learn. You know, I'd be lying if I said I don't have my own frustrations when it comes to just how things are done and communicated at times. But I know it's all par for the course, part of my journey. And um, there's still a lot for me to learn as a manager. And I'm just trying to soak it all in. At the same time, kill my role and responsibilities to the best of my ability. And I was just saying to a colleague today, like, one thing that always comforts me, even when I feel like things are getting pretty challenging at work, is that what God has for me is for me. No one can take a position or a promotion or my shine away. Like whatever is for me is for me. Um, and that's what I hold on to even during those growing pains, growth spurt moments, if you know what I mean. Um, so if you're going through anything, especially in the workplace where you just feel like, ah, oh, I'm not getting my just due or why am I being looked over for certain things? Just know what's for you is for you and no one can take that away from you. Um, and you know, just even the amount of encouragement that I got from a lot of my friends, I was super surprised this birthday. You know, I feel like a lot of my birthday wishes, um, whether people called me and spoke to me personally on the phone or whether um, people text me or sent me messages through social media, um, the, the, the reoccurring theme seemed to be the admiration for my drive and my consistency and my tenacity and my brands that I've been building and just um, that what I'm doing is helping people. And I didn't expect that at all. I was telling one of my colleagues today, I said, that really is what stood out to me. You know, don't get me wrong. Some of my girlfriends got me some amazing gifts and, you know, I'm so appreciative of that um, as well. But when you hear people say or mention that they are being helped and encouraged by what you're doing or that they admire what you're doing because you haven't given up or the fact that you're going for what you want like that meant a lot to me and that reminded me because sometimes you know when you're just building and grinding and like i said me building brands is not my first hustle so to speak i have a day job that requires a lot from me when i'm there um and so it's when i'm home now it's midnight and i'm doing a vlog it's like you know all of this uh brand stuff happens after hours most of the time and i'm still a wife and balancing all of that you know um and so you know, when I hear my loved ones actually recognize the hard work that I've put in for a couple, for three years now, over three years, and just even with Move of Finesse, that's only, I've only been working on that for a year, but just seeing the constant grind with that, you know, that, that meant a lot to me. Um, because there are t a lot of times, and I've said this probably more than not, that I don't always, I often don't feel supported by my loved ones, right? My mom, she goes hard to paint for me. You know, my dad, he go hard to paint for me. Um, my husband, he goes hard to paint for me um, as much as he can, because I know his job is crazy as well. And then there are even some times where I may personally feel he could go harder in the paint for your girl, but I have to give it to him. You know, he'll, he supports me um, the best way he knows how. And, um, but I don't always feel supported from like other family members or like, my friends, you know what I'm saying? So when you hear that they're actually like admiring what you're doing, you know, um, even though I may not always feel the support or um, or they may not come to a move with finesse dance class or may not buy a complex simplicity merch item, t-shirt, um, may not share whatever post I'm putting out there or, you know, just to hear that it's like, no, girl, we see what you're doing and we admire it. Or you're helping me, you know, that meant a lot to me. Um, what I still will say is, folks, it's important to support. Let us support our loved ones while they are still here. Don't have it where, God forbid, it's time for me to meet my maker 
and now you want to stand at my my funeral and say all of these things or now you want to show up with like a complex simplicity t-shirt after i've done been dead and gone like support your people when they're here give them their flowers when they're here let us support our loved ones and our people while they're here let us ride out for our people regardless of what you, if you think what they're doing is whack whatever if these are your loved ones these are people you support or people you say that you uh love and care about please support them y'all <laughs> Support while they're building. Don't wait till they done made it or blowed up to now want to like be a part of it and bandwagon everything. Like support your people. If you know you have people in your life that go hard for you, go hard for them. You know what I'm saying? Like let's all be better with that. Um, I'm constantly reminded of that. <laughs> Even when it came to my birthday, low key kickback. You know, I would say about 50% of the people I invited came, right? It is what it is, I had a great time. But I will always still see what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially when I know I come through for everybody, you know? Um, so let's just go hard and support the people we say we love and we care about while they're here, you know? Um, so yeah, that was a really cool thing to, to be able to like receive those messages from multiple people. You know, that meant the world to me. Um, and yeah, so I think I had a very reflective, chillax um, birthday, which is what I wanted. And um, pretty much, we're, half, we're 20 minutes in. I think I have another 20 minutes to go before I end this vlog. <laughs> um, it's funny, an interesting thought that I was looking at. I do follow Michael Basden on Facebook. And he had this post where he asked the question, because this is his style, this is what he does. We all know Michael Basden from being on 98.7 uh, KISS FM radio station. and He's been around for eons, right? I love that he always will bring up thought-provoking topics that deal with men and women and real life issues. And he had posted on Facebook the other day um, asking us women, can we agree when men say a good woman is hard to find? And of course, you know, I'm scrolling and I kind of stop in my tracks because you don't see that often, right? We're always hearing about how a good man is hard to find, right? Um, but to actually read and to see a man express, um, you know, or make that point that a good woman is hard to find, I had to kind of stop and read and, and, and read the comments and, and like, really get into this conversation, so to speak. Um, and he, he goes on to make another good point where he said, you know, he feels that a lot of us women believe that because we're good people, good natured people, that that means we're a good woman in a man's eyes. And I'm totally paraphrasing right now. Um, and I actually understood what he was saying, you know, just because we may be you may be a good person does not necessarily mean that when it comes to being in a partnership with a man that we're able to be respectful we're able to um hold our men down that we're able to be compatible that we're able to be comp we compromise when necessary that that we have all of those necessary ingredients that it takes um to be a part of a healthy relationship where from a man's perspective it's like that's a good woman i feel like we as women we've been trained to believe that a good woman is someone who cooks cleans and opens her legs whenever her man wants or that being a good woman is just like these stereotypical things you know sometimes i think we forget that being a good woman is being a supporter you know to your better half and being um giving that man a level of respect and um compromising and treating him how you would want him to treat you and Men want to be pampered and showered with gifts as well, you know. I can honestly say, um, Lord willing, I, will, I would have been married for five years in October. And I've learned a lot in these five years about 
myself um, and about my husband and what he requires and even what men in general just need and require in relationships and marriages. You know, a lot of times we as women, if I'm being honest, we're trained to think that it really is all about us and it's not. You know, it's all about us being catered to. It's all about us, um, you know, really like not having to do much compromising. And the man is supposed to bend over backwards all the time for everything you need and want. And, you know, he, I shouldn't have to communicate certain things to my man. He should just know. He should just know that this is what he should and shouldn't do. And like, these are all things that we've kind of been trained, how society has trained us to think that is not the case <laughs> that will not breed for a healthy relationship or marriage you know um, i had to learn what my husband's love language is love languages are and even if it's out of what i would feel comfortable how i would feel comfortable showing my love that's the, that's what he needs you know i had to learn that um he wants to be catered to and not even just in a sexual sense but you know for a man especially depending on their culture you know a woman cooking for them it means so much more than just actually filling their bellies or physical touch you know him having the need to feel wanted um to feel loved to need to feel his woman you know rubbing on him or cuddling with him or showing that level of physical attraction and affection like it's so it's a lot you know what I'm saying it cannot always be where your man is the one initiating intimacy and intimate times sexual times like they need to feel wanted and sexually needed in that way as well and so there's a whole bunch of things that I had to like learn and I that's why I feel like I understood where Michael based in what he was trying to say um, because these are things that I've even heard my husband say at times just in general about women and even sometimes pertaining to me you know um, like he like men want to know that you know every now and then their woman will fit the bill their woman will pay for a vacation their woman will do certain things to make them feel appreciated and valued as well you know um, and so, yeah, I, I thought that, that that point was pretty profound because it's like, you know, sometimes you can be the best of persons, have an amazing character, have great, have a great moral compass, you know what I'm saying? Have the type of values that are admirable. However, that may not necessarily mean that you're a great person helpmate or a partner in a relationship <laughs> you know what i'm saying um so i i found that very interesting you know um and something for us women to keep in mind when it comes to men those of us who you know choose to be with men um or who are with men in relationships with men something for us to keep in account is that not all the time because we think where this amazing partner doesn't mean that our partners always feel that way about us or always feel like we are bringing to the table in the relationship or in the marriage what they need as well if that makes sense you know um and so it's not only women who are out here having a difficult time with meeting good men men are also having challenging and difficult times meeting what they would deem to be a good woman as well right it goes both ways um and the men get a hard rap a lot of times you know a lot of oftentimes it's like we're always shitting on them when in all actuality sometimes we think that we're ready to be this stand-up wife stand-up partner spouse whatever you want to call it and we're not and there, we still have a lot of areas that we have to work on. Or maybe we're being more selfish than we realize in the relationship. Or maybe we're not meeting the needs of our partner. Or You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not all against the man. And it's not their job to 
to only cater to us and adore us and all these things. Like we have to be willing to, to be good to our men too, y'all. Take it from someone <laughs> who learns this every day. <laughs> You know, like I know I'm a good person. I know I'm an amazing person. But can I always say that I'm this amazing wife and great wife? No, I'd be lying if I said all day, every day, I'm this amazing and great wife. There are times where I completely fall flat and fall short of what my husband needs from me. But what I will say is, you know, um, Every hiccup in the road that we have gone through, I try my best to learn from, to apply what I've learned, and hopefully not to keep repeating the same mistakes, you know what I'm saying, and vice versa with my husband. I cannot say that every day he is, you know, uh, he's an amazing person, don't get me wrong, but I'd be lying if I said that every day in our marriage, he's this uh, uh, perfect, picturesque husband. That's not the case, you know what I'm saying? We fall short, but I think it's important for us to constantly think, he and I, what can I do to meet my husband's needs? You know what I'm saying? Now don't get me wrong, there's certain needs only God can fill, I believe, and only we ourselves can fill. But you know, the needs that are naturally, that you would need your partner to come to the table with these things, and you're coming to the table with these things, and, and we're loving each other the way we need to be loved, those types of things that I'm referring to. Um, I think as long as we show up every day willing and ready to, to do that for one another and to be that for one another, I think that's what helps, um, of course, with God's help, that's what helps marriages to survive. <laughs> um, you know, at least that's what I've been learning in my, in my short time of being married. Um, but I, I love that point that Michael Dyson, he put out there, you know, us women sometimes we got to like, get up off our soapbox sometimes and then really ask ourselves, you know, are we really, really, really making the effort to be that best partner we can be, you know, that best wife we can be. Um, same for the men. Ask yourselves, are you making that effort to be that best husband you can be? We will all fall short. Um, but every day that you get up, is that your focus, you know? Um, or is that something you ask yourself and that you're intentionally putting energy into doing um, in the midst of your day to day, in the midst of all the million and one other things that you're balancing? You know, I often say I balance a lot, but at the end of the day, you know, I think um, it's important even for me to remember what's my priority. You know, I have big dreams for my brands and big hopes and. Um, it takes a lot of my time and my day job takes a lot of my time, but I often have to remember and remind myself to prioritize what comes first. My husband's working tonight, so that's when we do the vlog thing, you know? Maybe don't do the vlog thing when you know that he's home and that's time y'all should be spending with one another, you know? So prioritizing my time um, and, and just what's important from what's not is super, super important. Um, vital. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me know, you know, if you agree with Michael Basin, if you kind of see where he's coming from, if you kind of see where I'm kind of coming from as well, you know, um, and like I said, it's not to beat ourselves up, but I think it's always important to, to hold that mirror up for us to be able to be honest with ourselves and to be self-aware. Like, you know, I'm learning and have learned that I have to be able to acknowledge when I am falling short in certain areas, whether it's at my day job, whether it's in my marriage, you know, whether it's um, in my Christian walk, whether it's with my brands, like friendships, I have to be able to acknowledge where I'm falling short and then make the necessary uh, revisions or corrections, so to speak, you know? Um, so yeah, that was pretty much what I wanted to put out there. And going back to my original question, if there are any fellas that are checking in and tuning in and watching this vlog, help me understand why y'all get real territorial when it comes to your ladies having like a sexy pick moment. <laughs> like I'm not in any lingerie, I ain't in no thongs, you know, like I'm in a bathing suit. Why do some men get real funny with that, you know? You should be proud if you're with someone who 
makes an effort to take care of themselves, you know what I'm saying? Or who owns their sexy, you know? Because um, I don't think I would feel some kind of way if like my husband had like a shirtless pic and some swim trunks, like he's done that when we go on vacation. Like I'm cool with that. I'd be the first one to make an emoji, the tongue hanging out the mouth, the the, the drip uh, water emoji, you know, the hard eyes emoji. I'd be the first one like, hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, so help me understand that, fellas. Why do y'all get a little funny when it comes to stuff like that? <laughs> um, and yes, just remember as you get, Whatever stage you are in your life, I think it's important for us to still take out the time to like look in the mirror and like love what we see. And if there are things that we don't love, let's work on them. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that to myself, right? I haven't been in the gym. I haven't been running in a very long time. There's still things that I'm like, oh, I'm trying to, you know, get this last roll gone or, you know, trying to get the little pudge in my belly gone. Um, so it's like, okay, Chanel, then do some core work or do some cardio or whatever, you know, like if there are things that we see that we're not liking too much, we have the power and the ability to change those things. But for the most part, let's try to be able to look ourselves in the mirror and love what we see. Um, but yeah, I think I'll stop here for now. Thank you for rocking out with your girl. Continue to go to complexsimplicity.com. Until next time.